Nigerians are anxiously waiting for May 29 to talk about the inauguration of President-elect after the general elections and many Nigerians have the opinion that we should let this rain. Why some others are saying the process is not what they expected. For that reason, there should not be an inauguration. It got so disturbing when a passenger in uh, Ibom Air was chanting, screaming, embarrassing the airlines, saying no to the inauguration. Of course, he was boned out from the airplane and taken up by the DSS for questioning. So many persons have divergent views and opinions about the outcome of the election and many are like, look, we don't have another country other than this country. But what do you think is responsible for hitting up the polity? The way some are going about it, is that the right channel to express their grievances? What happened to interpreting the constitution when you talk about elections and announcing the results? What happened to respecting, honoring the results announced by the umpire? What happened to exploit other means of expressing your grievance about the elections? How come some Nigerians are planning to take justice in their hands? that it will form the cross with this discussion, talking about salvaging Nigerian democracy ahead of the 29th of May inauguration. That means the fear of an interim government, they propounded by a quote right now, detractors. With me here in the city to talk about this, I have a political analyst, political affairs commentator, a vibrant youth, join me to welcome Idri Zachary. Welcome to TMI Sunday's edition. It's always an absolute delight to share this platform with you and with my respected, uh, my father and my very respected elder brother. All Thank right. you for having me this morning. All right. You get to hear put food on the table. You will not hear about this. The last time you came, you said, Wilson, congratulate me. I congratulate all us for winning. Right now, we've won. <laughs> congratulate me. <laughs> Okoro Osaho Baraye. Welcome you, to TMI. Thank you so much, my brother. We say, all right. happy new month. I think uh, things are turning around and God is in charge. God is in charge. All right. Uh, for your party right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, a, a legal luminary, a legal practitioner, political analyst, Jimmy to welcome Barista Dele Ibinejo. Welcome to TMI. It's been a while. It's been a while. Thank yeah. you, Wilson, for having me on. And hello, viewers. I'm pleased to be here. Uh, like you rightly said, it's been a while. Yeah. Uh, but um, <laughs> we're just morning is here on Creation Day. Mm. The beautiful okay. ones are not yet born. So let's see how it goes. All right. Let's see how it goes, really. Well, Nigerians are like having divergent views and opinions about the forthcoming inauguration and that has led to so many persons having this apprehension that some person may just choose to come out one day on May 29th to say no to the inauguration to scuttle the process of handing over. The DSS, they've raised the alarm, they've given stern warning. Other security agencies, they are on high alert. How did we get here, Paris Nadili? Wow, well, <laughs> very unfortunate. Um, it's very, very unfortunate, I have to say, that um, we are where we are. Uh, a situation where a cross-section of the people are so deeply aggrieved with the outcome of the election. Granted that in every election there must be a winner and there must be a loser. But there must also be the perception that the process was transparent, the process was unimpeachable. And most Nigerians feel that this election uh, and the result of it um, uh, was anything but transparent. There were areas, there were several areas where people were uh, disenfranchised. Uh, there was all kinds of malpractices, et cetera, et cetera. This is not a forum to analyze that. So I think that is what has given birth to it, to this disenfranchisement, to this uh, disenchantment. But if you ask me about a call for interim national government, 
then my opinion will be certainly, and this is a personal opinion, that that cannot be the way to go. We cannot have um, a contraption that is not provided for in our constitution. Whatever it is, there's been an election. Whatever it is, there's been an outcome. Whatever it is, those who are aggrieved have challenged it in the, mm. in the court uh, or tribunal. And the process is ongoing. The tribunal has uh, 180 days to decide uh, whether the petitioners are right or whether uh, the respondents are right. So I think that uh, that is the way to go. Mm. As for the other things about the SSS getting involved, for example, somebody on a plane who says, look, um, there should be no inauguration. That is not the business of the state security services. They are a little bit too, um, you know, too, um, uh, quote unquote, busy bodies with due respect, you know. Get, let the police deal with it and let the man uh, go. I even read that after they interviewed the man, they went, the man was let to go because he was just a rabble rouser. There was no substance to him. So if that is the case, why our state security services should focus on core, you know, state security, service, security issues and not on these sort of um, uh, minor disturbances, in my humble opinion. opinion. Okay. So having said that, we'll appeal to our people, you know, let the process go through at the tribunal. Whatever they decide, let the courts decide. Once the courts have decided, then let's all respect the decision of the courts. All right. Thank you so much, Barrister Dilek Benedo, for giving us a foundation to this discussion. Obarai, uh, like what he rightly said, of course, there was a man in Ibomla El that said, look, this is my opinion. I don't want him to be inaugurated. It caused serious sin. And he was pulling out of the airline, saying, look, this is not the platform for you to uh, carry out such disturbance. And there's this report also by the DSS that some Nigerians, some of them highly placed, some lowly placed, are planning to scuttle the inauguration that will be coming up on May 29th. Though I use the word he said, humble opinion in court right now, they are busy bodies, so to speak, talking about our secret police, but they gave the warning and they warned Stanley that anyone culpable of this offense will definitely been met with the full wrath of the law. Take it up from there. Yeah, thank you so much, Abode Amosin. God bless you. I think uh, I want to to sing that with my very, very respected senior leader here. That uh, what has happened has happened. Election in Nigeria is process. One is party primaries. From party primaries, you move to election itself proper. From election in Sepapa, you move to tribunal. That's the process. The first has been done, the election has been done. Now this is the tribunal process. This is the last phase of it. Mm. So we should not be saying crying for there's still hope for those that still say they won't. Mm. There's big hope. If you, if you think there's no hope, go and ask Adam Sali Yoshimobe. If you think there's no hope, go, and, uh, uh, go to Anambra, go to Kogi. So things can still happen. But by the time you want to destroy the place that you are in tribunal for, it goes to show that uh, you, you lack sincerity, you are not truthful to the people you want to govern. I don't also see somebody coming out to say May 29 cannot stand. If you want to know the power of government, go and ask late MK or Biola. Hmm. We are coming time, to that. We one, are coming yeah, to that. Time, yes. the richest man in Africa. Hmm. If you want to know how powerful is the government. So you cannot stop government. You cannot stop to say, if government decides to say they are coming to ITV tomorrow, mm -hmm. no matter what you're going to show, government is government. Are you getting it? Now? So the government has what to say, oh, the security situation will take charge. So how they want to take charge is none of your business. If you want to also know about government, go and ask those who participated in the NSS protest, protest, when, NSS, NSS protest when government decided to stop the situation. It was tough. You might shout to say it did not stop, but that is government telling you they don't want this thing to move beyond this board. So they will nip it at the board. Mm. Government is continuing. May 29th is sacrosanct. It's not what you can, we, we can speak here to say. You heard the man saying it jokingly yesterday in the plane. Maybe he might have a uh, smoke crack or weed mm. and uh, <laughs> he wanted to show it up. And quickly, just for that statement, government quickly handled him. Mm. The matter, the, the way they humbled him is not your but for him to disturb. 
So if I also start shouting, May 29 will not hold, May 29 will not hold, I'm on my own giving myself and my family problem. Mm -hmm. Because it's a process, you don't need to stay on the road. On that day, go and they've told you not to protest on May 29. They don't want to see, they've told you. So if you go and protest, you'll say, Because, uh, like my two leaders said, I don't want to speak English, go and speak English on that day. Mm -hmm. Our government will tell you they are government. Are you getting that? So there are processes you follow on this. If we, we are not in the military regime, that decree to say they don't want. No, it's a process. Court, the tribunal process is still on. What of it by tomorrow you win in, in, in tribunal? Which is very possible. It's not impossible. It has happened before in governorship. It has happened before Sydney. It has happened before reps. We do say it to say you did not win. You go from the first tribunal, from tribunal one, you go to two, from two, you go to three. Are you getting it now? We had the process in uh, 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 Osho State where the, the, the governor of the state was upturned. Somebody won it. The first court said, okay, it was the governor that lost. That is there. And now the third one, as we speak, the blessing is there. So we must continue on the process. It's a process itself, not what you can stop. Not what we say. No, no, I mean. So it's a moving train. Yes, it's government. Not uh, after God is government. Hmm. After God is government. Before you will get gone. Okay. I, I, I told you. I said, Wilson, if we fall this idea to say we want to go and take, let's say, ITV hostage, hmm. and we come here with guns and people are scared and move, it's a different ball game when government decides to come. When government comes, you know, you know, yeah, uh, government will take charge. But if we are here, we'll be looking back to say, hope nobody is coming, hope nobody is coming, coming. hope government is not. Government will not look back if we see it's coming. Government will not look back to say who is coming. They, are, they want to take charge. Okay. So my, 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 my advice for, for these people that is trying to shout quite far where they stand is to be patient. To be patient, it's a process. Okay. If they don't understand it, they should be lectured that what you are shouting to protest about, what of if obtained tomorrow okay. with, all your with all your evidences, evidence. and now you will not be declare you winner. Okay, I, I will come back to you, Obaraya. Use the word the if then state. Because they call it in mathematics, the if. There's someone saying this if. It's almost an impossibility. Well, I'll come back to you on that. Zachary, over to you. <laughs> uh, I. I want to differ a little bit from uh, my very respected uh, father and my elder brother. Mm. You can decide to flog somebody, but you cannot teach the person how to cry. The election process, I need to reiterate, the last election process was a national embarrassment. Mm. People who do not obey their own rules, they created a rule of how result will be transmitted. Look, look we, you have, we have to look at it clinically. People who cannot even obey ordinary electoral act. Electoral act is a sub-law under the national law. We have a very senior lawyer here. People who cannot obey the electoral act, who cannot even obey their own guidelines for election, are crying that people want to disobey the constitution. Because... No matter how you chose to look at it, mm. talking about interim government is a direct opposition to the constitution of Nigeria. There's, it's not established anywhere that there can be interim government. Mm. A democratic government must hand over to another democratically mm. elected government. The question now is, this government that is coming, can we say this election was a democratically conducted election? Is this election a reflection of the wishes and aspirations of majority of Nigerians? These are the questions that people, you know, after discussing on TV, in their inner recesses, these politicians, in their, when they go back home, in their inner recesses, these are the questions they must ask and answer themselves. These are the difficult conversations they must, ask, they must, they must have with themselves. So now, people are angry. You know, uh, uh, elsewhere, when you tell somebody, if I tell you, Mr. Wilson, I'm going to take you to court, you will say, no, 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 let's settle. Let's, let's settle our differences. What's the problem? Let's settle. We can dialogue it. They call it alternative dispute resolution. Sure. However, in Nigeria, 
it is politicians that will advise you to go to court. Because they know that they have the means, they have the resources to muscle you. And now, if you saw a very senior lawyer, it was part of your newspaper reviews this morning, a very senior lawyer saying he has lost confidence in the Supreme Court. It is that bad now. You see people now shopping for injunction and counter injunction. On the same case, I am not a lawyer. People, on one case, they will bring a judgment like this, they will bring another judgment like this. The temple of justice has been desecrated by politicians. So everybody is now looking for how to make the most money. And then, how do you now convince Nigerians? And indeed, aggrieved Nigerians who feel that this election, this last election, you know, whether you agree, whether you believe it or not, there are Nigerians who believe that this last election, I am one of them, was a rape of democracy. Now, how do you now convince somebody like me that the court is my hope? Where has it happened before that the court in Nigeria removed a sitting president? That's never happened. It's inconceivable that a Supreme Court that has a chief justice that is appointed by the president will remove the president. But a, in this case, court, in this case, we don't have a senior president. Eh? We don't have a senior president right now that, you know, took part in the election. No, he is going to be inaugurated. Look, look, I, I am a realist. Yes. I've told people, see, look, forget it. Okay. He will be the president-elect mm. today. Bola Metinubu will be inaugurated May 29. Mm. It's only God that can stop it. Only God. Okay. <laughs> but after his inauguration, mm. how do you expect? Because this case will traverse beyond his inauguration. Okay. Now, how do you expect that a Supreme Court where the Chief Justice of Nigeria, the highest legal officer in Nigeria, is appointed by the President? I will come to you on that. Now, you just hold on, Zachary. Now, you're saying that uh, your own opinion, that your mom did have said it's a rape on democracy. It's a rape, actually. All that should be like, no, it's not a rape on democracy. It, what we went out to vote for, that's what we got. Okay, different folks, different strokes. He hit the blame of the courts, judicial system, that in Nigeria get to hear go to court. You know, that climbs they'll be scared to say go to court. But here in Nigeria, places will be like, you don't like the result, you go to court. He talked about the election, talked about the way judgments have been delivered in various courts vis-a-vis -vis the Supreme Court. According to him, they've lacked, you know, confidence. They don't have it at all in the judiciary system. And I believe that you're part of the system. Take it up from there, Barry. Well, I'm a part. <laughs> <laughs> you're a legal practitioner in Nigeria. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm a legal practitioner yeah. in Nigeria. And um, I hear all these uh, comments about the judiciary. The judiciary has been bastardized. Judiciary do not have uh, the, the liver to be able to do it. has never happened that the judiciary, the Supreme Court, will remove a sitting president. Look, sir, with due, with due respect, mm -hmm. I, I also listened to Leonard uh, Silk back over when he, he lamented about his, his own personal opinion mm -hmm. about the Supreme Court and all of that and all of that. Now, my take on it is this. Um, and today is Sunday, so I don't know if you'll permit me. I'm not a pastor, I'm not a preacher on this platform, but let me work biblical. Okay. There was a time when a prophet of God who was running away from an evil person, you know, ran to a bush and said, look, just kill me, oh God. I'm the only one left. I'm the only man of integrity in this whole nation. And God said to him, you're a joker. <laughs> I have reserved for myself more than three or 4,000 people who are in one place who have not bended their knees to bow. So, in, we, we may think that the Supreme Court has been compromised. We may think that our judicial system has been compromised. But I can tell you, being a lawyer, I go to court every day. I'm virtually a legal practitioner mm -hmm. in the true sense of it. There are judges in this country who are very upright. Very upright. Very upright. Take it from me. And then the Supreme Court also. Yes. Okay. Of course, very upright. But you see, you must present your case following certain ways. You can't just shout in the street, oh, I won, oh, I'm the right person. I'm supposed to be the chief of that community. I'm supposed to be the tenant. And then get there and say, my lord, I'm supposed to be the tenant. I say, oh, oh my show. Oh, hey. <laughs> Actually, this man supposed, I give you judgment. No. 
There are ways, there are procedures mm -hmm. you present your case. And if you don't follow that procedure, there are also ways that the Supreme Court will deal with it. They will not change because of you. They will not alter it because you cried too much. Mm -hmm. They don't listen to uh, news on television to decide their cases. They don't listen to cries of people of, uh, on uh, Facebook to decide matters. They look at what has been brought the before evidence. them. Yeah, let me give one small example, sir. Mm. In, uh, in uh, um, this uh, Lawan, the, the president, the president, president, president yes, yes. everybody was crying, oh, why? Why Lawan did not participate in the primary? Why did the Supreme Court say that is the one? The Supreme Court said, look, the procedure they started the case with was very faulty. It was very faulty. When you are alleging fraud, that is a contention. If I say now that this man forged his certificate, mm. I have to give him opportunity to, to speak. speak, testify. Mm. I too, who is saying so, must come and prove it, demonstrate it that, look, look at the, the name, look at the picture, look at why I say it is a... So, in that way, you, are, you go by writ of summons so that you can call evidence. But in that case, they went by originating summons. They just assume that, ah, this thing is not, uh, he, can, he has no answer to it. He didn't participate in the primaries. And the, the result was spoiled. Lower court agreed with them. Court of appeal agreed. When they got to Supreme Court, Supreme Court said, look, why did you start this case with originating summons? Hmm. On such a contentious issue. The law has always been there. That contentious matters, you don't start them with originating so, summons. That is the law. Every lawyer knows it. And the Supreme Court re-emphasized that law. Supreme Court did not say, Lawan is the person that is the right person. No. They said the procedure you used was wrong in accordance with the law. These Supreme Court justices don't have any acts to grant with anybody. They have no personal interest. Mm -hmm. I have appeared before many of them, both at the Court of Appeal level and at the Supreme Court level. They don't, they're not really, these things don't move them the way, they don't wake up thinking of these things we think about. Their own is the law. I have appeared before them. Three volumes of what we call records of proceedings, record of appeal from the court of appeal, mm. running into about 3,000 pages. You see them asking you, go to page 2,950. Read your, read the second paragraph there. You go to, uh, you go to page 1,221. And you, the lawyer, you didn't read everything. <laughs> you see the lawyer trying to find that page. They have read it from page one to the end. I got a judgment recently from the Court of Appeal Lagos. When I tried to explain it to them, they say, ah, you don't need to bother. Is it not the, uh, the, the man was shot by, by, uh, by a soldier? Uh, the man was not there. He was shot by a soldier. And what happened to the soldier? They had read everything. They didn't know me. They didn't know my client. They didn't know the soldier. They didn't know the deceased man. But somebody who was not there and may say, ah, they were, they were very corrupt. Daily went to give them money. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to disagree with my brother. Um, it is, I'm only saying that let us have faith in our judicial system. This judge, they were, I heard them saying, uh, Chief Justice of Nigeria went to London to meet Tino. If the man is sick, will he not go for treatment? All right. <laughs> no, I know, no, no, sorry, John, no, really and truly. Really. If the man is sick, will he not go for treatment? So if I happen to travel to Oguashuku at the same time as you went to Oguashuku, it will not mean that we, you understand me? Yeah. So there's a lot of speculation in the air. Okay. But in all of this, let us try, please. Isolate, just remove the judges from this because they know that governments come and okay. governments go. They know that. Okay. Thank I, you, sir. I'll come back to you, Barry, sir. It's like, you know, just setting the record straight because it's from that. As a legal officer. Uh, <laughs> a legal officer. A legal officer. Barry, you talked about government. When government comes, you can't stand against government. And that is one of the fear of this person's agitating. They use the word muscle. They use the word intimidate. Some certain the place of these people that you cannot intimidate us. We are going to reclaim our mandate. From this point of view, do you think they have the right to do what they are doing right now, saying that this will not hold? 
No, why would you say this? Because, because of the press, because no. you now, you are saying you clear the part yes. of the judiciary. Yes. But now they are saying they cannot trust because government is involved. Why don't you want to trust it? You just explained something, or you are going back to what you just I'm explained. telling you what they are saying the on the streets. The way he has explained it. Yes. Then I, uh, I, I, was, I was also shouting, you know, the problem we now have is misinformation. It is ravaging and ravaging everywhere as if somebody would just leave that and tell you they saw by a class. I'm sitting here now that are present in Lagos. I'm telling you. And it will just be flying. If and some will believe it. Yes! Before you start, you generate yourself for me. It, your voice is quiet. Leader did also tell you the case of Imo State, where number four became number one. I'm sure people abused. That was the, some of the people that said, hey, judicial, until a legal luminary sat me down to say I should listen very attentively. That the man in law number four, that you are shouting, what he bought before the court, others did also bring it. He brought that some places you did not count my vote, which I next signed. And the tribunal asked, I next is this the, your vote? Why did you count it to his own? Now count it, and they counted it wrong. I before nobody explained to me, I was against that uh, 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 they've not told them what they've done this. Mm. But when he does explain to me the way he has done now, I was like, oh, it's good to know. Are you not saying it because you're a member of the APC? No, people don't, want no, to no, know no, that. No, 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 don't, don't judge me. Like, if you judge me, like <laughs> that is no, 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 no. Don't. I'm just asking the question. Is the heart of many Nigerians. What comes first for me? Yes, is commission. Commission. Secondly, my business. Thirdly, my party. Hmm. Not uh, I'm not a partisan person. You should remember before God of Baseke was sworn in, it was still ongoing. I already congratulated all my friends on Facebook. They ran that it also did publicly. I'm not uh, even more of my friends are even uh, in another party. I don't I don't do that. But we must tell ourselves the truth. The truth, you want to go you want to work on that TV, and uh, you are saying we must destroy a TV. It's a simple thing now. You want to scatter Nigeria. You want war in Nigeria. They are muzzling you up and you want to govern Nigeria. You don't do things like that. We, mm -hmm. You must be you must factor with, with facts. Mm -hmm. With this democracy we are managing, it's not yet rule for us, but we are going somewhere. So if we just say, no, we didn't get it right now, let's scatter the whole thing. One, ask those who saw Biafra war. They will tell you. These people have private jet packed everywhere to run away. The man that was shouting yesterday, to, for him to even board the plane, that he has money. That he was shouting. <laughs> <laughs> Those that want to fight cannot even board the uh, Okada. <laughs> so who are going to suffer more? You are talking about, you want to do this, you want to do that. After shouting and instigating people, you run away. You go and relax. Then they kill themselves, the later you come back. No, things are not done that way. I have always been a, an advocate of Patient and continuity. I have given examples on time to that number here. How in 1999, 98, I sat with leaders as a youth leader of that PDP. And none was twice my age. The man, the, the, the oldest was TV times my age. Lucky Bajor will say, okay, leaders go and bring this. Board appointment and everything. I will sit there as a youth leader. And you will hear them say, uh, since we have taken, the other will say, No, that's my lady friend that gives me good soup. Write her name. After everything, they will send me again to go and photo start and submit. That was my job. I could not, you cannot talk. When I go out and meet my friends, my friends will be mocking me. Like, you're not going for a job. These are politics, why you're the Not the shame. Old men again. I keep telling, not be old men again. Because nobody there, oh, if I shout dead, you just have to walk out. And that's the end. Nature brought it, all of them started going back. But the nature is not me, nature. That now, if we sit down, at least before you count four or five, I'm already seated. I now see the youth not shouting. I'm not, I'm not shouting. <laughs> But you shouted well, also. <laughs> you want to shout? Well, the youths now see you as the old man. Like the, God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. I'm telling you. So, you must, it's a process. You must be there. It's a process. It's, you don't speak English to politics. All right. It's a game on its own. That if you want to do it, be there. 
Follow, follow. A time will not come. They, you cannot shift me again now, politically. There's no way you can push it left or I'm there, push it right I'm there because I will tell you I've been done. No. So, right. the process, you cannot destroy it. Nobody, government will not allow you to destroy it. Okay. The leadership of this country will not allow you to dis destroy it. The people shouting, I don't even want it to be destroyed. Because they are our friends. Right. Okay. The people shouting now, I just say, let's also be fact out ourselves. You said the election was sweet. I wish to say it was sweet. Is it me that will tell you it was sweet? Where I voted the first election, I lost the place. And the other places that we lost or we won, I know it. Because we have a network, a, 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 a network of WhatsApp everywhere that say if you win, bring it. So before election was done, I already told you we lost here, we won here, we did this, we did that. Then before you uh, I already said he has won. Okay. Say, why would you say it? Hey, they don't have Lagos. I said, I okay. can I hear Lagos when we already have a pool a collection. Where collecting, collecting my own. Second election, the same thing. Second election, the same thing. If not for the intimidation in second election, we were already also winning. And that is why you see they are posting places now to say we are election, which was not done in the first election. But hold on now. So we must be factor to ourselves. Hold my on. brother, okay. if you say election is sweet, not for you to open it. Okay. Election is not read at the tribunal. It is read at the first point, not at open. I will come back to you. I'll come back to you, spoken at Ben Zachary. You've heard them. Mm. The legal practitioner here uh, in our means uh, threw more light on the judgment we hear. And of course, I bear witness to uh, delivered by the Supreme Court is all about evidence. Does it mean that this party or these people agitating, they don't have enough evidence or they are scared of prevent, uh, presenting uh, you know, tangible evidence? Uh, these are these saying that they don't trust the judgment of the Supreme Court. I am, I am not a lawyer, hmm. but I am a human being who knows how to read and write, and I have read the Constitution. Mm. The laws are meant for the people. The laws are meant to guide the people. Mm. The people are not meant for the law. Any law that is anti-people is a bad law. Mm. Any law that takes number four and makes it number one is a miraculous law. Mm. And the lawyer in our midst will agree that law is no miracle. Law is fact. I give you, and he said, they presented evidence uh, to show well, that it was well, number one. You, you can explain yeah. one thing that look when 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 you want to do a thing, you look for a way. When you don't want to do a thing, you look for an excuse. There is always justification. Go to go to Oko prison, bring the worst criminal who killed somebody and decapitated the person and uh, shared the body around beneath and buried it in pieces, and ask him. Why did you do this? He has a cogent reason why he did it. He has a valid reason that he will argue and even convince you. Go to in her mind the night. You see all those beautiful girls that the governor drove the other day that are back now. And ask any of them, come, young girl, why are you in the junction 2 a.m. in the night? If they explain to you the reason why they are there, you may even wear skirt and join them. So no matter how notorious, no matter how bad an outcome is, there's an explanation for it. What I am saying is that the last election did not meet the minimum acceptable standard for election in the 21st century. The APC that, uh, that is talking today threatened, threatened the Jonathan government. I have always supported the APC. It's just the election I, I went to support Labour. In, the last, in, the, in 2015, they threatened the Jonathan government that if the DS not conduct a free and fair election, they will form a, a parallel government. It is in the news. A son of a do state, Chief John Odigo Oyegu, was the national chairman of APC in that time. Those who have the record can quote is there in the news. You can browse it. They threatened that if that election was not free and fair, they will form an interim government. How come in 2023, eight years down the line, there's an election that they did not obey their own rules, rules that were set? Look, look. The outcome of an election is immaterial to me. My own argument is that the election did it meet the minimum acceptable standard? If those elections were conducted that day, results were transmitted electronically, before the end of the day, before 7 p.m. that night, we know the winner. Mm -hmm. But we waited four days to know the winner of that election. In 2020, Governor, Governor Godwin Obaseki is a re election. I, I, I supported the APC candidate. By 5 p.m., 
after I have checked the IREC portal, I saw results from the various local governments. I called my friends in PDP. I said, congratulations, people have won this election. How come we were not able to do that in this election? How come, look, there are miracle votes. I give you a classical example. In one unit in Akwaibo, in a local government in Akwaibo, if I was on my phone, I'll give you the name of the local government. In one unit, Labour Party had 135 votes, PDP had like four votes, APC had like two votes. At the end of the election, one unit, in the entire local government in Akwaibo, Labour Party did not have a vote. Is that not miracle? Miracle vote? Miracle election? That, that this is for the courts to decide. Yeah, they will decide. That, but, but, no, but these yeah. are facts. Mm. You know, INEC, you know, usually we we'll say, oh, let's wait for INEC declaration. You believe that the man in Abuja is the only INEC? No. The man in your unit is also INEC. And his result is admissible in court. Anyway, right let, now. Let me give you one last one. Right now, we can focus on the umpire. We are focusing on the uh, INEC results. Yeah, so all other results cannot be accepted. The one so I told you INEC. now in that yes. unit was declared by an INEC staff in that unit. I mean, is no longer INEC. The corporate that conducted that ledger was not working for INEC. Again, there is a, in Oredo, here in Oredo, we, this is our Oredo in Benin here. The vote, the difference between Labour Party and other party was 60,000 votes, according to INEC. You say we should quote INEC, right? Mm. According to INEC. At the end of the election in the whole of Edo State, Labour Party now had 300,000 votes. Is that not a mathematical miracle? So, look, there are a lot of things we can talk about. The minimum acceptable standard is what some of us are preaching. Oh. However, I am not here to promote uh, interim government or call to arms or violence like all the others have been talking about. But what I am insisting is that you cannot teach a child how to cry after you have flogged that child. Let right. them cry. This is my own way of crying. I will come here and you state cry. the fact right. and cry on all your right. neck. Okay. Let those who want to cry inside the plane, let them cry. If they have committed any, any offense, take them to the court. That's okay. all. All right. Well, uh, let's just be clear. He gave his own. It's account, my personal opinion. His own I personal agree. opinion about the results and all that. But the supreme result, the only one we can work with is one delivered by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Don't go and say Zachary said this is the right thing. No. Go to an INEC portal, you get to <laughs> see the right results. So let, let, let's be guarded. I really have to say this for clarity. Overnight, so you heard his own side of the story, so to yes. speak. Talk about miracle Jonathan or yes. that. Now, what do it's you feel about results. it? Miracle Well, um, I, I listened very, very, um, you know, patiently to, you know, him and, and my, my brother too. Yes. And, um, you know, it brings tears to my heart, really, that we are where we are. I mean, I, I'm a voter in the United Kingdom by mm -hmm. virtue of my residency status there. Mm -hmm. When election is being conducted, I don't know who and nobody knows me. I take time from my work to say, okay, it's 12, I'll go by one. I call my wife, when it's um, going to one, please, can we meet at a social place? So we drive there, enter the place, we vote, and then we walk away. And it is all properly done. There is no argument, there is no complaint about it. So it's very unfortunate that we are still at this point, that there are some people who want to truncate the process of democracy. Mm. Because that is what brought us to where we are. we are. And we must face it that it is, it is unacceptable that certain people will go and snatch ballot box in this day and age. Mm. That certain people will begin to manipulate results in this day. Everybody must realize that the, the end product of this process will affect you one way or the other. other. You know, it's, like, it's as the saying goes that you can't expect, uh, how do you say, is it a bad tree mm. to bear a good fruit? Mm. Uh, we are all Nigerians. We are all here. If we produce a good government, we will enjoy it. If we produce a bad government, then it will affect everybody. Whether you think you are a thug and you are given X amount of money to go and snatch that box or to go and kill that person or to go and do this, how long will you eat that money? Will your children also grow up to feed on that money? Absolutely not. Having said that, let me also respond a little bit, if you don't mind, to mm -hmm. the point my brother said that about government being, you can't stop government, government, you know, can crush mm -hmm. you, government is all powerful, after God is government. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I usually try not to disagree uh, with people, <laughs> <laughs> I try not to disagree with people, but that is exactly the kind of government that we don't want. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of government that we don't want. A government that is totalitarian, totalitarian that, that practices totalitarianism. That's the kind of that, that fears that we can crush you. 
That feels that we can arrest you and put you in a dungeon. That's the kind of government we are trying to move away from into a new Nigeria. Exactly that. And I say this with great respect. Obviously, it is what we are used to. It is what our experiences have taught us. It is what yesterday has, uh, has shown us. But there is a better future where we have a government that is pro-people. A government that puts people first. A government that says no, like the American government, like the British government. We are not going to do this because it affects. I, I, I did one when I was studying, and I'll just say this briefly: studying international human rights law in England. One of the cases they gave us to as a case study, and if you are going to be an immigration lawyer in the UK, you must know that that and you must pass that. Um, exactly. Yes, a, a, a Tunisian who had plotted against his country and had been sentenced to death, escaped to Italy. When he got to Italy, he also started plotting an Islamist to blow up some things in Italy. Mm -hmm. So they arrested him, and they wanted to take him back to Tunisia. I said, look, you are not even our, our national, mm -hmm. and you are here, and when you have committed our affair, we try to help you. Mm -hmm. So the question before the European Court of Human Rights was, now here, this man has committed an offense. But where we are sending him to, there's a, a sentence of death. Mm. Once he gets there, he will be killed. We, as Europeans, are against the death sentence. sentence yeah. So what do we do? Do we keep these terrorists among us or send him to go and be killed? So you must pass that, <laughs> that test. Mm. You must pass. Do you, do you, must you, will you live by your own... Um, ideals even when it is inconvenient or do you just do what is convenient do you live by your own ideals do you keep these terrorists because you are against the death penalty he's a bad man but you can't send him to go and die so that is what nigeria we, we are faced with at this point and every nigerian has to consider it we must have the vision of a new nigeria a better nigeria a people-centered Nigeria. Governments that think first of the people. Even if it is one person, what do we do about this person? It is social inequalities that's, that's causing people to go crazy in this country. We have the resources. We are one of the blessed nations on earth. And those states is blessed. Yet, like my brother said, you still see people whose job is just go and make a photocopy and come back. When there could have been a photocopier in that room. When there could have been a photocopier in that room. You see, you see the point? Yeah. So, but we are used to this. We take it out, okay, like he said, and I'm not disagreeing with you, my brother. Please, just bear me. <laughs> <laughs> like he said, just queue up, just wait. It will get to your tongue. To get to your but tongue. how old was the Prime Minister of Canada mm. when, he was, when he became Prime Minister? Did he just sit down waiting for the old people to die off mm. one by one? So, without disagreeing with you, this is the concept of the new Nigeria that we all must move to. Let us move away from the past. Let's move away from elections that at the end of the day, we have all this disputation. Why can't we have an election that at the end of the day is peaceful? Nobody came out to say, uh, don't come out to, otherwise you are a dead woman. Uh, when they declare festival, on the morning of the election and say, you know, if you are not a real indigenous, you don't come out. And mm -hmm. in other places, like I know, we had a woman, Mr. Semota or Mr. Semota, yes. who got shot. Why? Why? Who are you working for? Don't forget, it's your country. Mm -hmm. So that is the concept. If, if, if our government is people-centered, people-oriented, you see, I always say to them, for example, you know, I just, okay, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I put out a poster. People are saying, Your Excellency, Your Excellency. I said, Look, for putting out a poster, mm -hmm. I, I, I asked them, Where is it written in our constitution that if you are a governor, you become Your Excellency? Mm -hmm. All right. Are you an excellent person? <laughs> you are just a, no, really yeah. and truly. You are, in England, you are just a human being. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister of England was fine because he was at the back of a vehicle and he didn't put his seat belt. Seat belt. He didn't put his seat belt. All right. Why can't we have a country? What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? Uh, a, a big question. We will have other analysts waiting to share their opinions and, of course, talk on this particular discussion. So, one minute, eight gentlemen.
you're going to give your closers. He reacted to what you said, doesn't want to disagree, but he just had to like you to put the record straight. The government, Muslim, Muslim, we have to get out of that. 29 May is sacrosanct. Nobody's going to take it from Nigeria. But the method being employed by our security agents, do you think that's the right way to go about it? Yes, yeah, me, I've done this. Uh, I'm not, I'm a very, I'm a realist. I don't know how to pretend. I'm just my type of person. <laughs> One minute. Yeah, thank yes. you so much. Yes. What Baba said, you mm. see, he told you about UK. Mm. I mean, I don't live in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I live at Yikoba, as in the state, and that is where I stay. Yeah. And the way things are done there is different from Dubai, it's different from. But so, so we're, we're talking about an ideal society where the people are listen, 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 All right, listen, all right. Listen, all right. Listen. Don't let us. Yes, yeah, conducive. Is mm. your place conducive like this? So, <laughs> the ideal society will come, but it's a process. It's a process. Yeah. And the process is where all of us continue, not just the way you make the. You just, as you want to stand, you just keep your legs. You say, no, I'm not going again. No, mm. keep moving. Continue this process. If you don't get it right now, in 20 years, you might get it right. It's not magic. Mm. Because. Think of 1960 to date. It has been moving back. Democracy is trying to struggle it back now to the front. We are starting, we are not moving fast. No, now it's not magic. The, the, all of us here, the education system will pass through. Our dad didn't get it. Some of us were privileged to, to get a, a Bender State books free of charge during our league government in primary school. But now it's not the same See. with our children any longer. All right. So, it's a process. We are going to get it right, but not magic. It's not running fast. Mm. The government we have now is the government that we, we should follow now. Oh, no. But what are we going to change it? We must all continue to participate. All everybody should participate. Yes. Don't participate sitting here. Then, no, participate from your unit okay. to your ward. To your local government, right. to your participate okay. fully. Right. Go to meetings, attend meetings, so that when they want to appoint chairman, you will not give to one with some master that is a uh, that is no. You say no. This chair, do it as if it's a do or die affair. To say this is the chairman we want. Mm. From that chairman, in case they are going to that vote, mm. the chairman will not see this or say no. This is too young. I prefer the name Benedio always uh, speaking English for us. No. We, 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 know, we, have, we, have, a, we have a chairman Thank that will say the process that brought me in was Thank good. You. Let me also bring the process that was so that Thank the, you. if we don't do it, we sit here. We sit here. We we'll keep getting it wrong. So we should keep moving forward. Forward. Thank you, Brian. Idris. I, 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 to, to my fellow countrymen and women. Yes. When you have a rat that has run into your clay pot. Mm. It is wisdom you will use to kill that rat. Mm. You see these politicians that are running us ragged. It's wisdom we use to handle them. Mm. Violence will not solve it. Nigeria is 220 million. If we empty into Ghana, Ghana will cease to exist. Mm. The Ghana is 20 something million. If we empty into Ghana, <laughs> when we do presidential election in Ghana, in Nigeria we win. <laughs> so let's not uh, let's not rock the boat mm. too much. We have to, to be methodical, we have to be procedural mm. in dealing with uh, these very funny politicians that we have. Mm. But let me also assure us that miracle votes will not last forever. Mm. Miracle votes will expire eventually. Mm. Government magic will not last forever. Government magic will expire. Mm. Uh -huh. You see people are already singing now, that fast song, Yakubu, is going viral. Mm. That is their own way of crying. Mm. Let people cry. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. A minute. Well... <laughs> A minute is a long time. Um, I just want to say two things. One, my brother mentioned in those days when we have bended textbooks. Mm. And I think that we can still come back to that. We have the resources. We have the abilities. Yeah. We should have the competence, the capacity, the commitment mm. to be able to say that education should be free. Mm. There is no reason at all right. why education should not be free, free. Because there are people who cannot afford it right. in our present day Nigeria. Those are the things that keep me awake at night. No, right. How do we build a society that is people-centered, that is people-oriented, that is welfareist, mm -hmm. where human rights are completely observed? My, my brother said he lives in uh, some estate yeah, Koba, in, yeah. in, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the United <laughs> Kingdom. But United Kingdom has come to you. Yeah. Mm, yeah. The, like Jesus said, said, the kingdom of God has come to you. Yeah. Are you All now right. going to say, I won't live it? We are in a modern society. The world is not one global village. village. All right, thank you. Thank you so, so much, gentlemen. Let's get to hear from other analysts. But mind you, the opinion, yes, it has nothing to do with ITV. They spoke their minds. Someone said you can't beat a child and teach him how to cry. 
he or she is going to cry the way he or she feels the pains. But all the same, if you choose to destroy the country, which country will you govern? Food for thought. Gentlemen, once more, I appreciate a wonderful analysis. We'll continue with the discussion segment with some of our guests. Don't go away. Thank you.